Here's a turbo that I made for my BMW E36. This one I have not done before and it's very rare that I can say that I haven't built a turbo like this before. This is an on-center T4 turbine housing. These normally have a four bolt outlet flange. I machined that down and made it work for a V-band flange. That way it's a whole lot easier to connect the exhaust system. It looks so much cleaner without the extra material on there with the bolt pattern that I didn't really want to use anyway. This is an interlocking V-band, so I also stepped it for the interlocking flange. And it fits perfectly snug. Then I machined it here to be able to grab it on the other side and machine this side which I machined it for this 67 by 74 millimeter turbine that we had custom made for the HX, well it's custom made for the GT35R center cartridge, but it's based off the HX40 67 millimeter turbine design. This is a GT35R cartridge, or GTX35A2R cartridge. And this plate I machined for an O-ring so it seals up against the compressor housing. These bolts, I don't know if I put silicone on them yet, but they will get silicone on them to help seal the holes where the air pressure can leak through the bolt holes. So I've eliminated all the boost leaks that would happen at the tur turbo naturally with it being from Garrett. That's usually what happens. So I've cut those problems out so I don't have to deal with that. I made this V-band flange work so I don't have to deal with the bolt pattern. And this will bolt up directly to my manifold. It's a T4 open. And I used our compressor housing and billet compressor wheel, which is a GTX 35A2R, 62.45 by 82 by 90 I think it yeah I think it's yeah by 90 this turbo should be good for 750 horsepower now for the where it bolts up to the turbine housing I I try my best to take the cartridge and move it as far that way as possible because if you move it too far deep then you can cut through the housing, the casting, and ruin the housing. So in this case, I machined it as far this way as possible and made it so I didn't machine it any farther deeper than I had to. When I machine this area, I probably should cut it a little bit more because it gets really close to the bolt holes and the fitment's just really tight. These bolts I ground down a little bit and I also ground back on the drain on the bearing housing to make for a better fitment. Otherwise, I wasn't able to put all the bolts in here, but I've got all the bolts in here now after doing that. The other concern I have is trying to get this coolant fitting in here, but I could just grind this down. Another thing I could do is just go ahead and grab this housing again and machine this down uh, so th all this would move in or not all of it not the cartridge the cartridge wouldn't move in but the bolts and the brackets would move in as much as I want to move it in but I risk cutting through the housing so I left as much material as I felt comfortable with doing there are spacers behind these brackets here to hold in the center cartridge that's why these bolts are so close to the the uh, coolant ports and the oil feed and the drain. The oil feed would be no problem. There's plenty of room for that. The coolant ports just kind of look like they might be an issue, but I might be able to get around that. Or I may just have to put the coolant lines on there first and then put the bolts in. I'll just have to see how that will go. Tight, the fitment is really tight on a turbo like this, especially with the GT35R series, and even tighter when you go to do it 
with a custom T4 housing. But it's really important for me to make this right. And so when I go to do all this stuff, the tolerances are really specific. So it is a challenging job, but if it works and everything goes well, then it's totally worth it. If you want to see more about the E36, you can always subscribe to this channel because I am planning on putting this on the E36 within the next month or two. Whenever spring starts to come and it stops raining, 